Hi everybody, this is Anne. For those potters who sell their work in galleries, co-ops, and festivals, we're always on the lookout for creative projects that will become popular gifts for our customers. The most popular items are pieces that have more than one function. Something like a ring bowl that can also double as a dish to hold your keys, or maybe when altered right, even your cell phone. In this video, I'll show you how to throw a basic ring bowl, then we'll explore several variations of this project that are not only attractive, but have multiple uses. First, I'll demonstrate how I throw a basic ring holder dish. I center the clay by coning it up and down. Using the side of my hand, I push the mound down towards the bat so it flattens and widens out. I then used my sponge to push downward on the clay surrounding the center so it creates a slight depression. The displaced clay will begin to form the beginnings of your center stem. I just work that clay inward and upward, making sure I leave plenty of clay in the depressed area for later trimming. Okay. Don't forget about the outer ring of clay. At this point, I'll clean it up and make sure I have enough volume for the eventual pulling of the bowl. Now I can start to pull up the stem. I simply surround the center knob with my fingers and gently squeeze the clay so it tapers upward. I'm really trying to make as much contact around the stem with my fingers so I don't squeeze too hard in one particular area, knocking it off center or breaking it off completely. After the first pull, I make sure I push down a bit on the very top to compress the clay. For the next pulls, I continue thinning the stem at the base and working the clay gently upward so that it is thin enough for rings, but not too thin so it'll crack off. Now I can work the outer ring of clay outward and upward into a bowl shape. Remember to watch your rim and compress it after each pull so it doesn't get too thin. From the outside, I push in at the bottom to create a ring of clay and then squeeze it upward to increase the height. Once I get the height, I can use my red rib to push the inner wall outward, thus increasing the volume of the bowl and shaping it. I like to trim away some of the clay around the bottom, so later when I do the trimming, I can better see the profile of the bowl and the trimming is not such a blind move. Again, I compress and round the rim. Then I clean up and trim the foot away from the bat. Finally, with the red rib, I just cleaned up the outer wall of the bowl. You can leave the bowl round, but it's also fun to alter the rim and give it a nice shape. I rested a trimming spinner on top of the center stem. In this case, I'll divide the bowl into thirds, which is indicated by the blue marks. So at each blue line, I trace it down to the rim and mark it with my needle tool. At the first mark, I put my outer finger along the mark, wipe away the needle tool divot, and straddle my outer fingers with my two fingers on the inner wall. I just push the clay inward at that point. I repeated this for the other two divisions. There! Altering the rim not only creates interest in the piece, but it'll keep a rim from warping during firing. Now I would wait until the piece was leather hard to trim it. 
The problem with trimming is of course the protruding stem preventing you from turning it over on the bat. My hack for this is to simply wire off the stem temporarily. Now I can turn the bowl over and trim the bottom. After trimming, I just turned the bowl back over, scored the two sides and slipped one, then reattached the stem making sure it's straight. Another bonus of cutting the stem off and reattaching it is that it reduces the chances of the clay cracking at the stem base as it dries and shrinks. Here's one I made earlier. I divided it into fourths and carved a simple leaf vine design into it. Here's another variation where I divided the rim into eighths, carved sections into the outer wall topped with slip trail dots. I also slipped ribs into the inner wall and hand built the stem to create this cute umbrella shape. Of course, any color of celadon glaze would work for these cute little bowls, and you can see how they can be used for rings or to throw your keys into or even paper clips. Now let's do a few hand-built pieces. Customers love when you can incorporate nature into your clay, right? I don't know the name of these guys, but I love the shape of the leaves and their pointy edges. I trimmed off a few leaves of the same size. I rolled out a quarter inch slab and ribbed it smooth on both sides. For ease of moving the slab later, I placed a piece of plastic wrap down on my surface, then placed the slab over top of that. I arranged the leaves down around the center point on the clay, then rolled the leaves flat to the clay surface. Now when I pull up the leaves, I have this nice imprint of the veins and the outer edge. Using my needle tool, I can just free form a cut around the leaf texture, then remove the excess clay. Using my wet fingers, I cleaned up and softened the edge, first on the top edge and also on the bottom edge. Now I can pick up the whole thing using the plastic wrap and place it in a bisqued bowl mold. I gently push the clay down all the way to the bottom creating a rounded form. Knowing my clay, those deep crevices will be the vulnerable points where my clay would want to crack. So to avoid this, I rolled small decorative clay balls and inserted them into the points to reinforce those areas at the same time, making them attractive. Finally, for the stem, I rolled a carrot-shaped coil, thin enough so my rings could fit down over them. I rounded the top edge, then to add a decorative stripe, I rolled the coil along a diagonal of a rubber-ribbed mat. Now I just need to find the center of the bowl where I can score and slip and attach it. When it's leather hard, you can either flatten the bottom for a foot or make a foot of your choice. Here's what I made earlier where I created a ring from clay for the foot. Then I attached the bowl over top. Here's another hand-built variation where I used lace for the texture, then I carved the words rings into it. I created this cutie using my handmade clay stamps for the texture. The possibilities are endless. I can see creating custom gifts for brides and grooms with their names carved into them, or making them bigger for your keychains and wallets. Finally, I've seen several ring holders sculpting fingers out of clay to hold the rings. 
They're so cool. I wanted to try and make one. Starting with my quarter inch clay, I traced around the palm of my hand. I connected the dots and cut the clay out with my needle tool. This will become the dish part. With my wet fingers, I rounded and softened the edges of both sides of the slab. I set this aside on a piece of plastic wrap. I then rolled a long carrot-shaped coil long enough to accommodate the length of all my fingers. I simply used my actual fingers as templates on where to make the cuts for the five fingers. Fingers! Now I just needed to round off the top of each finger. Since the fingers will sit on the rounded edge of the palm, I shape the bottom edge so it'll sit on that edge with a little divot along the center. I just scored and slipped the finger and attached it in place. I added a little coil at the base for a stronger joint. I repeated this with the rest of the fingers while at the same time curling the fingers into a natural pose. Once I got the fingers in place, I curled up the bottom edge of the palm to form the dish. Okay, a bit creepy, but also sort of cool. <laughs> and if you alter the finger placement a bit, the ring holder can double as a cell phone holder to watch your favorite YouTube channel. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier where I threw the round palm dish on the wheel. I think I like the hand-built one more, but this works. Of course, these ideas are just the tip of the iceberg. The more you make, I'm sure your imagination will take over and you can come up with even more forms, plus think of more uses for these cool pieces. More uses means more way to market your wares. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.